Okay, hello. My name is Chris Zobin. Z-O-B-I-N. Z as in pizza, because there are two Z's in pizza. That's a little prank I like to do when I'm talking to a customer service rep. Um, anyway, um, this is my debut episode of my new YouTube show. And I've done a lot of TV in the past and, and did a TV show when I was living in the Twin Cities. And I've done a lot of performance art. I'm a musician, blah, 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 blah. But, and I've got a lot of videos on YouTube. Um, I've got a music video that I did, which I'll put a link in the description below that you might be interested in. But I thought it might be kind of fun to actually do a, a YouTube show where I'm on, in front of the camera doing something. And because I work seven days a week and uh, don't have a huge budget for doing a show the way I would like to, I thought it might be kind of just fun to do a pretty scaled back little show within this parameter of what I'm calling my whiteboard show. So anything I talk about is going to be something that I'm going to, at some point, at least uh, write down on the whiteboard. <laughs> so it's going to have like a combination of um, like a lecture aspect to it, but also some avant-garde performance art. This thing's going to just take on a whole life of its own. Just trust me. Um, I think at some point you just have to start. And, and this is good or bad. This is the way it's going to start. Um, I am, if you're astute, I am wearing eyeliner and some rouge because I thought that might be kind of nice for my debut episode. Um, also, periodically, I might put on my intellectual glasses and my voice lowers at least an octave when I'm wearing these things because, and I'll say things like indubitably because that's what an intellectual person should do. And as soon as they come off, I'm going to sound a lot dumber. Anyway, the debut episode here, I'm calling Planetary Baseball, okay? Because there are nine planets and yes, we are going to include Pluto. Um, it's interesting because uh, I saw a documentary not that long ago by a NASA person who his sense was that we still can include Pluto as a planet. It just goes down as a dwarf planet. So just as you have your gas planets and you have your ice planets, why can't you just still include Pluto? Plus anybody, you know, of a certain age or whatever is, there's no way we're going to like be like, no, Pluto doesn't exist anymore. Of course it does. So Pluto's a part of this. So I thought, well, okay, there's nine planets and there's nine positions on a baseball team. So it might be kind of fun to go through the planets and put together what would be our lineup um, if we were to put together a planetary baseball team. Um, and so I think a good place to start would be to, and this is where we're going to use the whiteboard, um, is just kind of go through the planets and see what positions they might be a candidate to play. So if we go, let's just kind of start with, we'll just kind of look at the, the nine planets in order. In order of what? In order of distance from the sun. So Mercury would be number one. Number two is going to be Venus. Oh, Venus. Uh, Earth. Okay. Okay. Mars, obviously, fourth, and then we've got Jupiter, fifth. We've got Saturn, sixth. Uranus, <laughs> or Uranus, and we'll talk about all this stuff later at length, at ad nauseum. Neptune, seventh, I hope you guys can see this, and then finally Pluto. And so the first thing we want to talk about is what positions really w would these would these um, uh, different planets even play so if we think about mercury we're talking about the smallest planet or actually this uh, it it would be eighth in size it would be pluto would be the smallest and so it's it's small and yet it temperature wise it would be the second hottest it wouldn't be the hottest um, and so to me, Mercury is not going to be a catcher. It's not going to be a power position uh, like first base or third base or maybe any of the outfield positions. 
I would say to me, Mercury, and we're not going to definitively pick this, but I would say Mercury would be either our second baseman or our shortstop, which we, you would usually think of as a smaller uh, physical uh, person, and but somebody that's kind of fast and hot like Mercury is. Venus, um, if we move on to Venus, now you're thinking, okay, the size of Venus would be uh, the sixth largest, so it's not huge, but it's a little bigger, and it is the hottest. And oh my God, is Venus hot. Um, so when you think about a hot position, I think Venus has potential to be quite a few. Probably not a catcher. I could see potentially first base. Second base shortstop, maybe, maybe. Third base, maybe any of the outfield positions. So that would be left field, center field, or right field. And I think definitely Venus is a planet that would be a uh, potential to be a pitcher. One thing that is interesting about the planets is that the six of the nine planets actually are named after Roman gods, not Greek gods, but Roman gods. This is interesting to me because when we think of mythology, um, we really think of the Greek gods and not the, um, not the Roman ones. And in fact, the Roman ones were predicated on the Greek ones when they stole them. <laughs> you know, and so Mercury really is a Roman god and it would be Hermes. So if we had named these planets after the Greek gods, which you would think we probably would have because really Greek mythology would be more, I think, more the norm than Roman mythology, that would be Hermes. Venus would be Aphrodite. And then we get to Earth, number three. Earth, okay, <laughs> for starters, let's just first of all take a look at the positions that Earth might actually play. Could Earth, Earth would be the fifth largest, so not small, and the, it would be the third hottest. I could see Earth being catcher. I could see it being first base, probably not second, not short, maybe third. I could see it being maybe left field, um, maybe right field, probably not center field. Potentially, I could see it being um, um, eh, probably not a pitcher. Anyway, Earth is interesting for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's the only planet that's not named after a Greek or a Roman god. That seems a little strange right off the bat. Um, although... Um, there is a Norse god named Jord, J-O-R-D, which would essentially translate as Earth, and it's a female god, so a goddess, I guess you could say, and uh, so in that, maybe that's even where you get the terminology of like Earth Mother, but still, it wouldn't be a Greek or a Roman one. At, at best, it would be a Norse one. Interestingly, Earth would be <laughs> the, the soil, the earth, right? One of the things that I find so interesting about that is that um, we're known as really the water planet and kind of what distinguishes life is the presence of water. So ding, 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 ding. I wonder why we are not called Neptune is almost the name that should be given for earth because that would be really the water god. Um, and so that's kind of interesting. And uh, hang on just a second. It sounds like we've got a call here, which I did not expect here on my debut episode. Hello? Um, yeah? Okay. So you're a long time caller, first time listener? All right. That's interesting because this is my debut episode. So. I don't understand how you could have called in before, but, uh, okay. All right, your name is Hansel? All right, as in Hansel and Gretel? Okay. Uh, well, no, I don't actually deliver pizzas. I'm in the middle of a YouTube show. I'm talking about the planetary baseball. Okay. Um, okay. That's a little, 
that's a little weird. Okay, all right. All right. All right, I'll mention that. <laughs> all right, thank you. Thanks for the call. Hey, and listen, guys, if you want to get involved in this, um, just call in. My number is 555, and you can get on to, to the Zobin Whiteboard Show. Anyway, that was a guy named Hansel, and somehow he got a hold of my number here. And what he was saying, it's kind of gross what he was talking about, but I guess it, it's, it makes some sense. And what he was saying was that um, he found it interesting that that drink that we usually have around Christmas and New Year's is called eggnog because he feels like it's more like sperm nog. And in terms of texture and the way it looks and whatever. And he challenged me to drink some eggnog, but with the understanding that it's sperm nog and just to see if that would affect my enjoyment of it or my perception of it. So I said I would do that. And um, just as luck would have it, I've got some eggnog, which I guess is now sperm nog, and we are going to pour it in this glass. I think right about there is good, and I guess you can kind of see what he's getting at. Hansel is getting at that this texture-wise, I guess, and I'm going to drink some sperm nog. See if I can hold it down here. Yeah, yeah, I guess it does kind of change how you perceive it. Anyway, let's move on in our lineup here. Um, Mars, which is the fourth planet, and we would, that would be the uh, Greek equivalent would be Aries. So if we had used the Greek names, um, Mars, again, it's, it's small. It would be the seventh largest. So it's one of the smaller planets and it's the fourth hottest. And like our friend Mercury, I would really say Mars would be probably more second base or shortstop, okay? Um, our next planet is is one of the two gas planets, um, and it is the largest by far. Jupiter is number one. Jupiter is another Roman god, and um, the Greek equivalent would be Zeus. So if we had given these Greek names, Jupiter, we would have called Zeus. In my mind, there is only one position for Jupiter. I think the only one that it really can be is catcher because you're thinking you want something big and powerful and, um, you know, and substantial. And I think that is definitely Jupiter. Saturn, um, is number six. Saturn is also one of the, the, the second gas planet, one of the gas giants, they would call it. Saturn is again, a Greek, uh, or a Roman, a Roman name. The Greek equivalent would be Cronus. And Cronus, you might remember, is kind of the father of Zeus and, and all of the kids and all the, you know, the gods came out of his head and <laughs> cracked it open. They wound up eating him. It was just the whole, or he ate them. The whole thing was kind of cannibalistic. Saturn is the second largest planet. Of course, it is extremely exotic with the ring around it. And it would be the sixth um, hottest, but it would be a cold planet. Saturn, we know, isn't going to be catcher. It could potentially be first, you know, because it's going to have some power too, but it's also going to have some speed. So I could see not second or short, but third base, yes. Possibly left, possibly center, possibly right field, and maybe pitcher. Possibly. Okay, now we get to Uranus. And oh boy, what do we do with that one? Is it Uranus or is it your anus? No matter how you pronounce it, you're gonna get into some trouble. Now, one of the things that's interesting is that Uranus is one of the two planets that is actually named after the Greek god, not the Roman version. The Roman version, had they stuck with that convention, would have been Calus. Calus is C-A-E. I don't know if you guys can see this, but C-A-E-L-U-S. That would have been the, um, the Roman version of Uranus. Now, as luck would have it, 
I actually have four anus stories. So you're talking about your anus, you're talking about our anus, you talk about my anus. And just as luck would have it, I've, I've got four anus related stories, which is probably four too many or at least three too many. And they all happened within a couple of years of each other. And so in, in not in chronological order, the first one is when I was working for a company called Kaplan, I had come back from lunch one day and <laughs> I still had my screensaver on my computer. And just as luck would have it, my screensaver was actually the planet Neptune. And in came a coworker, coworker, which is co hyphen worker. And you have to be careful because if you shift that hyphen over, it would turn into cow orker. So I had a cow orker who came, just happened to come into my cubicle um, when my screensaver was still up. And this was a very dignified gentleman, very serious. He was a financial guy and not, not a particularly funny guy. I mean, he was, again, very serious. Anyway, he comes in. <laughs> And he sees the image of Neptune on my screensaver. And he was like, oh, is that, <laughs> is that Uranus? Is that Uranus? And initially it's like, okay, that's low hanging fruit. I'm not going to start laughing at that. I mean, of course it's funny, but it's, it's, come on, we've all been there. We've done that. And, and so I didn't start laughing right away, but then he's like, oh no. And then he could see that it was like a blue um, image. And so he's like, oh no. Uranus is kind of brown, isn't it? <laughs> and at that point, it was over. I just, I just died. I started dying laughing. There's just no way to contain it at that point. And uh, so that's the first anus story. The second one is a very dear friend of mine, a guy by the name of Chad. He and I invented many, many years ago, back in the 90s, a game called Dice Football. And we've played thousands of games. Of, of this invention of ours. And one one day, we were well, one evening, we were playing at my place uh, when I had a big house and um, he had me down like 21 nothing at the half. And in dice football, <laughs> your odds of coming back from 21 nothing are, are basically zero. And I may have smoked a little bit of weed or something and Anyway, in a very bold prediction before the second half started, I said to Chad, I said, you know what, I'm going to come back and win this game. And when I do, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to show you my anus. <laughs> and, and I think I was emboldened to say that to him because the odds that I was ever going to have to deliver on that promise were, were next to zero. I mean, they were minuscule chance. And then as luck would have it, I stormed back, I wound up getting a couple of kick returns for touchdowns or punt returns for touchdowns, and I wind up winning the game. And so with great joy, after I won the game 28 to 27 or something like that, I pulled down my pants and I spread my butt cheeks and I showed a good friend of mine my, my anus. Again, we can talk about your anus, we can talk about our anus, um, or we can talk about my anus. And um, <laughs> the third anus story, if I haven't lost you by now. By the way, this is a baseball team. And one of the things I'm going to try to do when, I'll get back to these stories too, but one of the things that I'm going to do when I do a um, whiteboard show is to um, file it using the Dewey Decimal System. So if I were to do something with the solar system, which I'm doing, I would actually say that that would be 523.2, okay? 523.2 would be the planetary system. So that's one way, but it's a mashup. It's also baseball. Baseball is 796.357. So one idea that I have when I'm doing kind of these Dewey Decimal mashups is maybe for the next show or a potential future show is you take those two numbers of the Dewey Decimal system that I'm using, in this case planets and baseball, and that would add up to 
319.55. Now there's no Dewey decimal number that goes that high. It goes up to 999.999. It's decimal. It's based on uh, 10 major categories of 100 each. There's a thousand slots in the Dewey decimal system. But if you took the combined planetary system and baseball, added them up and divided by two, that would give you 659.77. Now, if you just happen to have a log book of all the Dewey decimal numbers at your disposal, then you could actually go into your log book and see that 659.77 in the Dewey Decimal System would be advertising and public relations. And so at some point, maybe the next episode, maybe the one after, at some point, that would be an interesting subject to do a whiteboard show on, would be advertising and public relations. This is also my idea of how you just cannot have if writer's block. If you are a creative person and you just seem like you don't have any ideas for anything to write about, either lyrics or maybe a script for a show or something like that, this is a technique that just destroys writer's block. It would be like a Dewey Decimal mashup where <laughs> all you really have to do is just pick a couple of categories randomly, if nothing else, Add them up, divide by two, and then generate a completely new topic. There's just no way you'll, you'll never run out of ideas, and and um, sometimes less is more. I think when you're when you're talking about uh, writer's block or something like that. Anyway, let's go back to the anus stories here. Do you like my rouge? Here, here. All right, is it Uranus or your anus? Um, anyway, um, the third one. Okay, so. Uh, once upon a time, I had three different dogs. I had a, a pug, a St. Bernard, and a Boston Terrier. The Boston Terrier, her name was Wendy. And Wendy was a great dog, um, but of all the three dogs that I had at that time, Wendy was usually not the personal favorite of any of my friends. They didn't dislike her, she just wasn't the favorite. It was usually Tulip, the St. Bernard, or Pup, the, the pug. So Wendy was, had kind of a niche popularity, and she was kind of a spazzy dog. Anyway, my friends uh, Jason and his girlfriend at that time, Kayla, uh, really liked uh, Wendy. And whenever they would come over, this was just one of these weird things that, you know, I guess made sense to us, and Wendy certainly didn't mind, but I would, I, whenever Jason and Kayla would come over, I would lift <laughs> Wendy up and and greet them at the door by pressing her anus against the little glass uh, slit of the front door. Again, Wendy didn't seem to mind. There was no, um, no pain involved, nothing like that. And Jason and Kayla got a big kick out of it because they loved Wendy. Anyway, Wendy at one point died and I had uh, told Jason and Kayla about it and they were really bummed out and they decided to come over uh, <laughs> just to console me and just hang out and kind of, you know, give their condolences uh, to Wendy. And I thought when, when I heard them ringing at the door, I just thought symbolically it made sense. You know, for me, since Wendy was now gone, I thought I would greet them by pulling down my pants and pressing my anus against the, <laughs> the glass <laughs> slit in the door. Again, it, it, you had to be there. Sometimes you just had to be there. And, but I think it was a very appropriate gesture and it made, in some crazy way it made sense. The fourth anus story um, was, and there's no easy way to say this without just sounding weird, but I think by now you probably already think I am, um, is that um, usually after I take a number two, um, you know, I'll take care of biz, wipe, the you know what and then I'll usually just take a little bit of toilet paper and you know stuff a little bit up there it's just just kind of make sure that you stay dry and whatever and I've always kind of called it my diaper right no big deal it's just a personal thing I'm not hurting anybody blah 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 anyway um one day I had done that early in the morning put you know taken a number two wiped put in a little diaper in my you know what on my anus and uh, didn't think anything of it Later that afternoon, I had an appointment with the dermatologist to take a, a, a look at a mole on my uh, my temple area. 
my cheekbone area, I guess. And never thinking that, you know, my anus was going to come into, into play. Anyway, this guy, you know, took a look at the mole, but then he kind of gave me this little weird exam and, and asked me to, you know, drop my drawers. And I did. And it's just like, oh my. And then he starts putting his finger up my, you know what? And, and then at that time, then I was like, oh God, <laughs> I still have my little toilet paper thing in there. And, uh, and I thought, well, if he was assaulting me, uh, it kind of served him right to, you know, to get a little surprise. And I mean, I'm, it's all I can do to just prevent from cracking up, you know, cause I just find the whole thing to be, to be interesting. But anyway, Uranus, Uranus, whatever. When I think of positions there, you're talking about the third largest planet, so it's not small. It's one of the ice giants, just like we had the gas giants with Jupiter and Saturn. So Uranus, which should have been Calus, if they had called it the Roman uh, name, we could have avoided all this all these years. Anyway, I see Uranus. I could see it maybe being third base, maybe left field, maybe right field, okay? And then Neptune which is interesting in, in and of itself because remember Neptune is uh, definitely the Roman name but it would be the god of, of water of the oceans and wouldn't you think that that would have been the name for earth you know instead of earth you know I love how we have like earth for our planet and god for our god we have these like real generic terms for like some pretty significant entities anyway the Greek equivalent would be Poseidon of course Interestingly, though, um, since Neptune is an ice giant, I was thinking, is it conceivable? Apparently, Janus was one of the names, uh, a Roman god Janus was one of the names that was being dangled around. So maybe they should have just gone with that. But the, I guess the, the, the Roman god of winter or ice would have been Boreas, which is actually the god of the north wind. Um, and the equivalent in the Greek would have been Himes, H-I-E-M-S. And that just doesn't seem like that would have been a very good name for a planet. Anyway, I think with Neptune, I see it kind of the same thing as Uranus. Third base, left field, right field. And I think the fact that these are kind of far out, you can probably see where I'm going with this. Finally, Pluto. Now, Pluto is also, it's one of the two planets with a Greek name. And, and Pluto, uh, the, um, I guess the, well, I'm sorry. Um, yes, yes, it was a Greek name. And it had they actually used um, the, it had they used the Roman name for Pluto, it would have been Dis Potter, D-I-S-P-A-T-E-R, okay? Now, Pluto, definitely not gonna be catcher, not first base. I could see it being potentially, because it's the smallest, you could see it being second base, potentially shortstop. And then also, I think you could make a case of it being one of the outfield positions. So maybe left field, maybe right field. Now, as we get on with this lineup here, we already know that Jupiter is going to be our catcher, okay? And Venus, to me, considering the fact that it's the hottest, I'm going to make Venus our pitcher, okay? Um, I feel like Earth, Earth um, is probably going to be our first baseman here. I see Mercury as being our little second baseman, okay? Um... I think Mars is probably going to be shortstop. Okay. I see Saturn being a power hitting third baseman. And I'm going to put Uranus or Uranus in left. I think Pluto, we are actually going to put, I think Pluto will put in center. And Neptune we'll go ahead and put in right field. And I guess we should put together a batting order. Um, you know, if we use that convention, um, Venus is gonna be ninth, being our pitcher. I think leading off 
we're probably going to go with Mercury leading off, batting first. We're going to have Jupiter fourth as our catcher. Um, Saturn, we're going to bat fifth. Pluto, we're going to bat eighth. Mars, we are going to put second. Neptune, third. Uranus, sixth. I'm not a big fan of Earth. You can see that, can't you? You know, we're going to bat Earth seventh. And so, folks, that's it. That is our planetary baseball team. There's a couple other baseball teams I might do at some point. Other things that come in nines would be cat lives. So you could do maybe something with um, um, pop culture cats like Garfield, Felix, uh, Morris, you know, from nine lives. And also the muses from Greek mythology, like Xanadu, where there would have been nine of them. So anyway, guys, that's kind of an idea, a basic idea of what I'm going to try to do here. Um, and I would say a couple of things. Be sure to work for your homework assignment. Put together your Dewey Decimal um, binders so you can have numbers. And if nothing else, enjoy a nice cold glass of sperm nog. And um, again, if you want to get in on the calls, just like we had with Hansel, just give me a give me a buzz. Hook me up. 555 is the number. And I guess until we meet again, this is the Zobin Whiteboard Show. You take care.